Imagine if we could replace fossil fuels with sunlight. This will change the world as we know it, paving the way for massive economic, environmental and geopolitical impacts. Our team in the Department of Chemistry is working to bring this vision closer to reality. Humans have pushed our planet to the brink of a cliff with the vast use of natural and fossil resources. We must turn to a more sustainable and circular economy. Chemistry plays a leading role towards this goal, and the development of efficient and sustainable chemical reactions is the key to addressing this challenge. Chemical reactions are processes that turn one substance into another. They are the heart and soul of several important industries. Often, chemical reactions need a lot of energy to happen. Think of a chemical reaction as running a marathon. It is as if a turtle had to run the marathon. Interestingly, catalysis, which refers to the acceleration of chemical reactions by a catalyst, enables the turtle to become Superman, so that reactions can be completed much faster. In this context, if the energy required to drive catalytic processes could be harvested directly from sunlight, the possibility of replacing current industrial processes based on terrestrial fuels by sunlight could become a reality. We are working on this challenge by developing nanoparticles that are a thousand times smaller than a strand of hair that can act as antennas, harvesting energy from light. This energy can be used to drive, accelerate and control chemical reactions. Therefore, this provides a pathway to solar-driven chemistry. One challenge in this area is that the nanoparticles that are the best antennas are often not so good catalysts. It's like the best antennas behave like slow Superman. Just like in a marriage, one person can be an excellent cook but hates shopping for food, while the other enjoys doing groceries very much but doesn't like cooking. The two people can then complement each other and overcome each other's limitations. Similarly, in the nanoparticle designs that we are developing, we can have one component that acts as an, as an antenna, harvesting energy from light, and a catalytic component that uses this energy to accelerate chemical reactions. Therefore, we can combine the properties of a powerful antenna and a very good catalyst in a single nanoparticle system. This concept is illustrated by nanoparticles that we recently developed containing gold that acts as an antenna, harvesting energy from light, and iridium oxide, which acts as the catalytic component, using this energy to accelerate chemical reactions. I believe our research will enable breakthroughs in terms of energy efficiencies and open new frontiers in the field of solar-driven chemistry with new discoveries in terms of reactivities and reaction selectivities. This will enable the development of a next generation of sustainable chemical reactions, which is the stepping stone towards a healthier and more sustainable future. Thank you very much. Thanks all for such a nice presentation. Uh, let's go back to the uh, slide number four. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about the nanoparticles you just showed there? Sure. Yeah, these nanoparticles, we call these nanoparticles nanoflowers because their overall morphology resembles a flower. They are composed of, se of several petals or branches these uh, several petals or branches are made of gold and they are very closely spaced. These 
kind of morphology where they are very close to each other is important because it maximizes their harvesting of energy from light abilities. In addition to gold, the catalytic component, which is iridium oxide, is present as a very thin layer at the surface of each petal. This ultra-thin layer is around one nanometer in size, and this is also very important because these morphological features enable also to maximize the catalytic properties of iridium oxide. And this is actually very visible in this uh, image that shows an uh, elemental mapping of this nanoparticle. This can be obtained in an electron microscope, and then we can identify the precise locations of the different elements. So in red, we have the positions where gold is in the nanoflower, and in green, the position where iridium is. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so where and, and how actually these nanoparticles can be used in practice? Well, in, in practical applications, they can be used to improve the efficiencies of several current mm. industrial processes. For example, in the pharmaceutical industry, energy industry, petrochemical industry, and also environmental industries. Uh, other practical examples, for example, consist in using these nanoparticles and this kind of solar-driven chemistry to convert CO2 mm. and biomass into important molecules. This uh, has direct implications for targeting climate change, for example, in which we can turn CO2 from a pollutant to a commodity. So we can use CO2 as a starting materials to make like fuels and important molecules for or precursors to the pharmaceutical and other industries. Other types of practical applications would be providing clean water to degrade plastics and microplastics into hydrogen, which is a fuel, and other starting materials. So there are many kinds of interesting applications that can be targeted with these technologies and, and nanoparticles. Uh, this must be very, very, co a very popular topic uh, in chemistry at the moment. Or yes, yes, this is a very important yeah. and active topic yeah. of research, and uh, the community is working very hard yeah. towards, ach towards achieving this goal because you know the world needs a more sustainable and circular economy in the future. So you need really, uh, really work hard in your in your lab to to actually resolve this. Sure. Good. Yeah. <laughs> we are we are very passionate about this topic. Good. Uh, and what stage is the research now? And when do you think that we could be able to use these solutions? Yeah, How so far are we now? Yeah. So this research is still in this in its fundamental stages of development. So I would say by the end of the decade or next mm. decade, we could start to see applications in the industry which means that it's very important to develop these fundamentals mm. and the understanding of this chemistry and this kind of technology, because, you know, catalysis is involved in the synthesis of over 85% mm. of all chemicals and materials produced today. So even, like, new developments and improvements or more sustainable uh, catalytic processes, this could have a huge impact in terms of the environment and the economy mm. as well, because the volume of converted material is very high. So we can, we could, we can in, in the future, improve energy efficiency, uh, minimize the amount of waste, use milder or greener uh, conditions, and improve the utilization of raw materials to turn into a more circular economy approach. Cool. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you.